Welcome back. What's going on? You know what time it is? We've got some more things. Don't you love things? Things are my favorite. So now, let's open the things. Let's open the things. Oh, I think this is one I've been waiting on for quite some time. I don't think it was late. I just think I've been, like it wasn't in the, the top of the packages I've been opening. And it's in a it's in a shipping shield. Fuck shipping shield. Sponsor me. Sponsor your boy. So this is the fourth this is the fourth Boromir, Warden of the Tower, that I've been waiting for. But more exciting than that is this Andoral Flame of the West. Gets plus three plus one for only two. And then whenever it attacks, create two tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit tokens of flying. If the creature's legendary, instead those creatures are attacking as well. There's almost times when I don't want to be attacking with them. So I'm not sure if being legendary is better or not. But this card is bananas. And I picked it up for the cube, obviously. So <laughs> yeah, really looking forward to trying out Andoral, especially when you can get it with a Stoneforge Mystic. Just a cool card, man. But yes, I think those are the last few cube cards I was looking for waiting for? I guess I wasn't looking for them. I knew where they were. Oh yeah, look at this. <laughs> this is so satisfying. So this, again, this is the Odyssey uh, planes that I'm choosing to use for my pre-modern decks when I play pre-modern, if I play pre-modern. Oh, but look, it was all a trick. And then I just picked these up because they were like seven bucks for 20 of them, which is just such a great deal for this sweet John Avon Onslaught Forest. One, two, three, four, five, six. I may try to just keep picking up um, retro frame lands for just whenever I can, just pick up 20 of each. And then four of this, my favorite, my favorite mountain. Yeah, this mountain is fantastic. So those are all for pre-modern. Ooh, what do we have here? This is a thick boy. It's a little... Also, so got some schmutz on the outside. Looks like some, somebody dropped it in their pizza. But this is from Honolulu, Hawaii. So, shout out to Humble Shopkeeper in Honolulu. Interesting. My nose is itching. I promise I'm not picking it. It just had a little, a little tickle on the tip. As if you know what I mean. So we got these. This is this is cute. Uh, let's make our lives easier. I just oh no. I hope this wasn't. I hope this isn't a collector's item. I don't even think I got that bottom one, but I got the other two, and that should be enough. I think these are just like. I think these are just card dividers that they stuck together, in order to keep these cards from from shifting. Which is fine. Whatever whatever gets the job done, you know? Any port in a storm, as they say. Do they say that? Who knows? So here's some interesting ones. You can probably see, get small glimpses of them. Two copies of this Aragorn the Uniter. Not to be confused with Omnath, who has the same cost. This guy's a 5-5. When you cast a white spell, you make a human... And when you cast a blue spell, you scry two. And when you cast a red spell, he deals three damage to an opponent. And when you cast a green spell, target creature gets plus four, plus four. This Aragorn really does it all. And I do kind of like the other version better, the borderless version. But I think this version was like four bucks for me. And the other version's like 19 or something. So I like this one enough that I could not justify spending an extra 15 bucks or something on them. And like I said, I think this showcase version is one of the coolest showcase frames that we've seen yet. And then we have Minamo, School of Water's Edge, another super expensive legendary land from Kamigawa Block. However, this one I think was like 14 bucks instead of like 50, which the original Minamo is. And it looks super cool, man. This art is fantastic. And then we have Spiteful Banditry. X red red for an enchantment. 
When it enters the battlefield, it does X damage to each creature. Whenever one or more creatures your opponents control die, you create a treasure token. This ability triggers only once, once, once each turn. Once each turn. This is basically um, the red Meat Hook Massacre. That's what people have been comparing it to. And I don't think they're that incorrect. I mean, it's pretty sweet. And you get to make a treasure every time a creature dies. Like, I mean, it keeps going after you've cast it. Like, it's not like you cast it, the creatures die, you make the treasure, and then that's it. Like, every time on future turns, you're still making a treasure every now and then. Which is pretty cool. Oh, this one. Oh, no, I, I actually opened this one preemptively because it says, like, shipping department, urgent, please rush. And I was like, is this like a replacement credit card or something that I was looking for? So I checked it and I was like, no, it's definitely a magic card. And it's, oh, wow, that's so sweet. It's another Aragorn. But this time he's the Rookie of the Year. Wow. Rookie of the Year Aragorn. I'm actually going to open this and put it back in here and that's going to be the thumbnail. And you guys are going to be like, wow, that's so clever. He's such a clever guy. What a little smarty, you know? Wow. Wow. Okay, that's our Rookie of the Year, Aragorn. I'm really glad he's he's made the big leagues, you know? Here's a TCG player package. But I don't feel like struggling with the, the bubble mailer, so... We're just gonna rip, rip that bitch. So, oh yeah, it's just lands, guys. I'm sorry. I know it's not, it's not super exciting. I feel like when I'm getting a bunch of lands in, it's never super exciting. So we got five of these. Oh, these are such, they're so pleasant to look at. Five of these Odyssey planes. Let's make sure none of them are Dominaria remastered. And then we have five of these beautiful mountains. And then we have one of this forest. And then we have five of these mountains, Rob Alexander. And then two more of these on the bottom, because that's, that's what you should do. You should break them up, obviously. Break them up, break them up. Now we have a package from all the way from Brookhaven, Pennsylvania. All the way. All, they made it all the way here, you know? Right down the street. Okay, so this is... Oh, look, I like, I like it when they do this. They add a little tab here so I can easily just pull it up and pop these bad boys out. These are two copies of Unspeakable Symbol. Pay through life, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. I saw two of these in a pre-modern deck so I picked up two copies because that's how many I saw I'm not sure the, I'm not sure the best use for them but I know it was some kind of nonsense but anyway unspeakable symbol maybe you've never seen that card who knows here's a little package from RIW Hobbies a classic All right, what do we got here? They're already all ready for this. One Sanctimony. Whenever one of your opponents taps a mountain for mana, you may gain a life. These, This is back again when hosers were just nonsense. Like, oh, you're playing a red deck? Oh, you're spending three mana? I guess I'll gain three for free. So four, four copies of Sanctimony back in Urza's Destiny. Four copies of Ensnare. <laughs> another free spell from Nemesis. You may return two islands instead of paying their mana cost, and then you tap all the creatures. So four copies of that guy. Four copies of Starlit Sanctum. This is a combo with the Cleric deck. Just a way to sacrifice your guy. Target player loses life equal to that Cleric's power. So, Dara Spiritualist, flip his stuff, 
Starlet Sanctum targets them. No, it doesn't actually target anybody. But anyway, it's just a good cleric card. And then two more copies of Gainsay, which I picked up two the other, the other day. So that's my final four. Final four. Like, I didn't know we were talking about basketball. Oh, boy. And I got, like, four more here. Sometimes I actually try to, like, open it from here, and then I'm like, you know what? Who's got the time? Just gonna rip that thing. These are... These are definitely coming around. Um, I've seen more shipping shields recently than I ever used to see. And I'm really, really glad to see it. Like, they're far more frequent now. So I got three copies of this Retro Frame Absorb from Dominaria Mastered. And the re again, the reason I got these is because they're like 25 cents versus the actual Invasion ones, which are like $7. So I'd like to pick those up eventually, but for now... 25 cents is more than fine. They look great. Five mana for an enchantment aura. When this enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. The monarch controls enchanted creature. Enchanted creature attacks each combat if able and can attack you. So this is interesting. Because it steals one of their creatures. And you become the monarch. And it, it just seems very good. Like I thought there's so many cool cards in like a lot of the commander sets that just seem really good. And I love looking through um, the commander sets when they come out and just finding cool stuff like that that I can like put in the cube or maybe consider for the cube. Because I mean like straight up if you compare this to like control magic, it's one more mana. But it's one more colorless mana. It's only one colored mana. So it's easier to cast. You still steal the creature. However, if they become the monarch, you lose control of the creature. But it can't attack you. <laughs> so even if they get their creature back due to having the monarchy, enchanted creature can't attack you. Like, it's, like, it's, I don't know, it seems really good. It's, like, got this baked in, like, fail safe on it. Like, yeah, you can get your guy back, but can't do anything. See, this is what I'm talking about. I was going to show you, but there's no reason. Look at that. See, I'm telling you, man, these are way more popular, and I'm, I'm, I really like them so much more than top loaders. I have two 32 card, 3200 count long boxes, like the wide ones with the four rows, the four row boxes, full of top loaders. And honestly, I, I wish I didn't. It's just annoying. And this is a second Antiquities Ivory Tower. God, they look so cool. You know what? Back in the day, these old cards, they looked washed out. They looked kind of bland. They didn't do anything for me. But now, as like a an elder boom, MTG boomer, they just look so much cooler. There's There's like a nostalgia to them that just really, really hits it's like you're playing with kind of like pieces of history. I think hey, there's such a cool feel to like cards like this. Yeah. I don't know. Like it's the same reason I want to pick up like a Juzam de Jin, Juzam Jin, uh, or two, you know, if I ever get the chance, because they're just, they're not in any decks. It's not a playable card. It's not a card that's in decks, but it's just such a cool, iconic magic card that it just feels cool to have. And like, they just really remind me of like those early magic days, you know? So, that's my second ivory tower. What do we got here? Oh, look. Guys, you're never going to believe it. <laughs> More lands. These are listed as MP, but they look very good. I love it when the MPs are like, are you sure these are MPs? Five more of these guys. Let's make sure. <laughs> yep. All right, cool. Yeah, just five more. I always want to make sure because, like, there's so many printings that look identical nowadays. Like, the two things I look for are the set symbol now because, obviously, like, this could just be a Dominary or Mastered Odyssey Swamp or uh, Planes because they just reprinted it. <laughs> or it could also be, like, a list card. So I always check the, the lower left corner, too, because I'm like, oh, no. It looks exactly the same except it has a tiny, a tiny little Planeswalker symbol down there. This was sold by Dave. Thanks, Dave. 
Again, I was trying to open it the normal way, and I'm just like, who's got the time? Look at this. Look what this came in. This cannot be cost effective, Dave. I'm sorry, but that's amazing. Dave, you sent me this friggin' sweet Daffy Duck card just to send these three mountains. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> also, 1999. This card is 24 years old. That's amazing. Wow. I kind of want to keep the card too, just because it's fucking cool. And like, yeah, that's cool. Well, that's it. That's all we got. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate you. Hope you guys are enjoying these as usual. Comment, like, subscribe. Do it for Daffy. Thanks for watching, guys.